you're talking about the students, um, now I mentioned, um, I told you this uh, story uh, this Saturday. Um, now one thing that shocked me recently is, um, and I told you, it's either <laughs> your phone names are going mainstream or the scamming world oh, <laughs> is yeah, very, totally. very desperate. Yeah. So I just thought that was a funny story to share. So normally I had uh, some experience with uh, scamming on Amazon or eBay mm. when you're trying to look for equipment, let's say cameras, audio equipment. And oftentimes it's a good idea to use, uh, to look for second hand equipment because mm, uh, sure. you, if, you know, if you know what you're looking for, you can get uh, an excellent shape camera or audio equipment at uh, a way lower price than you know you would normally want to spend and uh, sometimes once in a while you get these people who say well contact me personally let's mm. figure out a different payment and you just know that's a scam now last week i had um one of the well-known professors um at one of the, the local universities he got in touch with me saying hey would you like a student my schedule is full and uh he forwarded me uh, this gentleman by the name of Colin. I could not remember the surname. But anyway, he said, I'm looking for a um, teacher for my 13-year-old daughter. Her mother passed away very recently, and I'm always traveling. I'm a ship engineer. I go on these month-long you know, trips, uh, work-related, and uh, I want to make sure she's busy, she's uh, well taken care of, and um, my cousin would drive her to the lessons and... Um, we agreed on the price, and oftentimes I offer a little discount if people pay, let's say, for a whole month. Hmm. Now, this gentleman did not ask for any discount, and he offered me to pay three months in advance. On top of that, we agreed on the date, and um, the last email he sent, he told me that his cousin is going to be taking the daughter to me on 4th of April to the venue we agreed on, and he's going to be bringing me a check, which is going to be uh, signed off not by him, but his boss. And the check is going to be larger than the amount that we agreed on. And he would like me to take the check, take it to the bank, and as, as soon as the money go to my account, I would give him the remaining money to make sure the daughter gets the materials for the lessons or whatever. I didn't even mention the amount. So obviously, I straight away called the guy who forwarded me um, the the student and I said, do you know this gentleman? And he, he said, no, I'm not familiar. And I told him the whole story. And he said, just, just don't reply. Just, yeah. This is a scam. So I decided to go to police. And, um, well, they checked the emails. And they say, uh, they told me that something called advance him, advancement scheme. So they told me that the next thing would probably be you agree on the date. And a day before, they say, well, Mary could not come in, but we still like you to receive the check by mail or whatever and um, I decided uh, they told me to just reply um, asking for a little bit more details like hmm. phone number address and obviously there was no replies anymore but it shocked me because uh, normally I'm my it's hard to scam me I'm, I'm pretty aware of how this whole thing works I would never ever anticipate anyone trying to scam you through private euphonium lessons no. how about that <laughs> That's that's the first I've never heard of anything like never, that before. It's, it's unbelievable, and I'm I'm trying to figure out. Uh, I was going to ask whether you had any Nothing. similar situation where somebody uh, didn't want to like pay or like trick you or whatever. Oh, I've had people not pay me, but uh, you know that's just that's just part of being in the profession. Sometimes there was once uh, we went with the brass quintet to play a very difficult and modern program in Ghent, which is in. Belgium. Was Belgium. that with River City or? No, no, it was uh, years ago with the uh, English Brass Ensemble. And uh, we specialized in avant garde and modern music. And there was a festival for which we were booked. And we went to play. And um, there were about seven people in the audience. And, uh, seven people? <laughs> yeah. We were five on the stage and seven. And you in the came audience. from? We came from the UK. Okay. We, we, we came from the UK. We drove, we took the ferry, we went over there. And we were quite young, okay. and I remember the the presenter, the promoter's name was uh, was Schmitz, something like that. Schmitz. And uh, anyway, we played the concert, and he was supposed to come with a check after the after the show, and after the show, he, there was no one. He disappeared. He just disappeared. So what do you do in those? So cases? what we did, what I did, is that we went to the phone book of uh, Ghent, this place, 
and we phoned up every person called Schmitz. <laughs> How many? There were about a hundred of them or more. And, and then we found him and his address was there. We took a taxi. I took a taxi. <laughs> By now it's three in the morning. That's so It's three in, three in the morning. Uh, I took my instrument out. And you start And I started playing outside his house. That's as loud as possible. I said, hey, Schmitz, you need to pay me. You need to pay me. And uh, of course, the neighbors, the lights come on in the houses and people say, hey, shut up. No, I'm not going to. Until, until he pays me. Yeah, He's a neighbor, thief. Yeah, your neighbor is a thief. Yeah. He's a it's thief. A your neighbor's a thief. He, he engaged me to play a concert. He runs away. He doesn't pay me. <laughs> play, play, play. Very, very loudly. Eventually, he comes out. He's in his pajamas and he writes a check. He gives me the check. I'm just curious, what, what's the thought process that goes through the head of people who do that stuff? Because obviously if he wrote you the check, that means he had the money. Yeah, of course So I'm is. just curious, what they expect to, like, what? You're just going to come in from, like, across yeah. the other country and just let it go? Just, yeah, you just say, okay, well, that's fine. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Uh, no, I don't think he was expecting me to find out exact, exactly where he lived. Because we had his office address. Well, he, he probably should have uh, thought about that before giving yeah. his real name. He, um, he, uh, he picked the wrong guys, let's say that. <laughs> that's funny. So. <laughs> yeah, but that's the only, that was the only bad experience that 